working now. All right, so welcome again, everyone. This is our uh, repeat session of recording lessons with a Mac or an iPad when teaching remotely. And I just want you to know up front that this isn't about all kinds of content and, and um, resources and sites to use to teach. It's just more about the tools to create um, personalized information or lessons or ways to reach your students when you're not in the same physical space. And we're starting with Mac and iPad um, just to have a, fo a focus area. But just so you know, next week, um, Molly and I have a couple of sessions planned that are specific to Google tools. And those of you who wouldn't have um, a, a Mac laptop or an iPad or an iPhone, um, specifically a Chromebook. Um, but for this session, even if you don't have a, like a MacBook laptop, a lot of these things apply to an iPhone. So it might just be a personal device that you can use to record your lesson and then share it with your students. And so I have quite a few ideas. Again, there's a handout that goes along with this that you can access now or later. Um, it's at bit.ly slash CL record lessons. And I think Molly added that to the chat. So you can scroll up through the chat and click on that link or just write it down and view it later. And I'm actually gonna share my screen really quick here and go to that document just so we're all looking at the agenda, the same agenda here. Um, we're gonna start with a couple of Mac tools or one Mac tool specifically that's built in called QuickTime. So this is for teachers who do have a school issued Mac laptop and you just wanna make a recording of something, whether it be your voice, a video of yourself or your screen. These are your three options in QuickTime and you don't have to go get any kind of software loaded, it's just built in. So you may see across the top, top right corner of my screen where my mouse is spinning around right now, there's a magnifying glass. And I'm gonna type in that spotlight search quick time. And I'm gonna hit enter. And then I'm going to um, already, it's, it's gonna launch quick time player. Whoops, I apologize there. It, I clicked search too fast, there we go. There's the, the icon for quick time player. Um, once you've found that, you can just double click on it and start it, but you really don't know that it's running unless you, hey, you look on the top left. Was that you, Molly? Katie, I don't know if it's just on my, yeah, it's Molly. I don't know if it's on my end or everywhere, but you might want to cut your video. You're really cutting out. All right, I will do that. It might just be my end. Let's try it now and then report back to me, Molly, in a minute or so and see if the audio is any better. I think yesterday I did it on my hotspot. It's better for me. Right now? Okay, great. All right. Stop me at any time if it gets bad again. And um, I can switch over to a different Wi Fi, but it'll stop it and start it. So we'll try to go on this for now. Okay, this is my better. So much back better. to, yeah, we search for QuickTime Player. We find it in our applications, but we might want to add it to our doc so that we can get to it quick and easy. So just so you know, once you have it down there in your doc, you can do a control click, go to options, and you would say keep in doc or show in doc always if you want to. That's what I've done. So that now all I need to do to start a recording is click down on this blue Q icon. And then it does act like it's running even though I don't see anything happen. But the file name up here in the top left where my mouse is spinning around, it says QuickTime Player. So now I can click on File. I can do New Movie Recording. Now you'll get to see my video. There we go. So this is just a, a record window. I have a red record button down here in the middle. You can see that it's picking up my audio. And Molly, you might help Tammy Cheatham join this Zoom meeting because she's texting me and not in the right place. Would you be able to do that with my number? Yep, got it. Thanks, got it. Okay, and um, there I've got the microphone going and I'm ready to hit record and I can just welcome my students and give them some instruction or some information of th that they need to know. Click that stop. A little bit delayed there, but now we have 
file and we can save this video and put it anywhere on our machine. Um, we can name it, we can send it out, put it on our LMS or whatever we need to do, Seesaw, Google Classroom. I do recommend with anything that you create because of our bandwidth restrictions at home, that you take an extra step after you record something and just do file and export as and choose a lower quality recording, in this case 480p. It'll make the file smaller, but a lot easier to, um, to go ahead and send out to our students. So there it is. I've just made that recording. I'm going to close it out now, and I don't really want to save it. Um, but that was a new video recording. Know that you can also do file new audio recording. And sometimes just hearing your voice is enough assistance for our learners. You can just hit record, start and stop it. And then we just have this little audio file that we could do file, save. Um, and the same thing, then use it to send out along with the work that we're sharing with our, our students. Um, you can also, another little cool trick with this, whoops, I just, oops, I didn't want to do that. Hey, Katie, I'm going to stop you for just a minute. You bet. You bet. Go for it. Hey, there was, there was about four or five of us and we got on the wrong Zoom room, so there might be some other people joining here. Okay. Sorry about that. That's totally fine. If you guys would like to um, get caught up, all you've missed is this URL here up here at the top of the document that is kind of a guide of what you're seeing now is that URL. So you can write that down. And we're talking I'll about using in the chat. QuickTime as a built-in screen recorder. Um, we've just covered the video and the audio, and now we'll talk about screen recording. So again, QuickTime down here in my doc, Launches QuickTime as the active application, and then File, New, and those are our options for recording something fast and easy. The little trick I was going to tell you prior to that was that if you drag um, from the, 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 the file name up here, it says Untitled, and there's this little icon, and you just drag that, you can actually take this audio file and you can add it anywhere. You can put it right in this Google Doc, or you can you know, um, just manipulate that file from there. But to be really safe, file and save would give you control over what it's named and where it's saved. Control over what it's named and where it's saved. Excuse me, yeah. Katie, can you say that again? Because you're cutting out. Yeah, um, you yeah. are really cutting yeah, out you again. you are really cutting out again. Yeah. Okay, yes. I'm trying to think if it would okay. be safest. Yes, I'm trying to think if it would be safest. If everybody can hear me now, stay in if this everybody room. everybody can hear me now, stay in this room. And I'm going to switch my Wi-Fi. And I'm going to switch my Wi-Fi. <clears throat> It'll take just It'll a minute. It'll take and just I, a minute and then, and then Katie will rejoin. Katie will rejoin. Actually, are you guys still there? Actually, are you guys still there? Yes, Katie. Yes, Katie. I don't think it kicked me out at all. But I have audio feedback. I have audio feedback. I do too. I do too. But now I have. But now I have. No, there's still feedback. No. Molly, do you have anything why that would be echoing? Do you have why that would be echoing? Some people need to Some people um, need to no. uh, mute. Oh, you think no. it's mute? Deaf? Oh, you think it's deaf? You think that was just then feedback through, okay, somebody was playing it and it was coming back out my computer. Yeah, you're better now. Okay, hey, cool. And so I've muted everybody, but you can still unmute yourselves. Thank you guys for being patient with that. That's um, a good experience for me to have on this end too. I'm back to my <laughs> AirPods so that I can hear you better and hopefully you can hear me better. And I think I will stop my video again to save bandwidth. And remember, if you need any technical assistance, feel free to chat Molly in the chat. 
um, or unmute yourself and just ask like you've been doing, keep it up. I'm gonna go back to my, uh, my screen. We're gonna finish up with QuickTime then and move into some other tools. So I'm sharing my whole computer screen right now and you should be able to see the document that we're using as our agenda, as well as what we're just reminding you about QuickTime if you were able to hear that great and if not, I'll do a quick review. I launch my QuickTime player. I click on my file, new. I've got my movie and audio recordings pretty um, handled and now a new screen recording. Gives me the option to record whatever I do on my computer. So if you pulled up a website um, that you wanted students to hear your voice on um, as you talk or even a PowerPoint presentation, um, whatever it might be, this would be what you would use. Your two options here are to record the entire screen or to record a selected part of your screen. Like maybe you only want half of your screen in the recording. I'm just gonna do the entire screen. Um, before I click the record button over here to the right of the toolbar here, it is important to know that underneath these options, you do have to turn on the microphone the first time you do it. And so I could say, yes, use the built-in microphone. Um, and also I would recommend turning on the check for show mouse clicks. And that way, um, if you're teaching about something, the people in the recording can view your mouse as well. Otherwise, if you don't turn those two things on, then your recording won't have any sound and it wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to see where your mouse was. So once I have those two checked on, from now on, whenever I do a QuickTime screen recording, I can just click the record button and it'll count down for me. Three, two, one, I think. <laughs> why it's not, I don't know. New screen recording, let's try that again. Oh, maybe it was set on a portion of my screen here. I'll get the whole screen. There we go. <laughs> well, whatever happened there, there we go. And this was my, my recording then. And just like the video and the audio, I can do file save. But remember, if you were listening before, it's important to export it as maybe a lower quality in order to be able to send it to our students. Because just because we recorded it doesn't mean they're gonna immediately have it. We still have to upload it somewhere and send it out. And I'll talk more about that later on. So just to back to uh, reviewing, I'm gonna quit QuickTime here. QuickTime is a built-in tool that comes on your Mac that if you have a laptop, you can go ahead and record in those three modes and then share it after that. Um, the second way that I would recommend if you already have a Mac is to use the built-in Keynote application. Um, and this is especially helpful if you're a, maybe a high school teacher that already has PowerPoint slides, you already have presentations that you in the classroom would teach with. I encourage you to uh, use this and just add your voice on top of them. I've got a PowerPoint file here from a science teacher that he shared with me. And I just opened up my PowerPoint in Keynote and I'll show you how to do that in a second as well. But now I'm ready to go to this play menu in Keynote and say record slideshow. Now it opens it up so it's more like presenter mode. And down across the bottom, you can see if your microphone is on or off and you can see it's picking my voice up now. So that if I hit the red record button at the bottom, it's gonna count down for me, three, two, one. And now I can teach and advance the slides and talk about what's on the slides, just like I would in the classroom, maybe on my smart board or whatever it might be. And as I am recording this, it's also recording my voice. Whoops, I'm gonna hit stop here. There we go. This is, I think there was some um, previous recording there that was playing, because I've already done this a couple of times. But when I get out of that, that play, record slideshow mode, now those audio notes that I used with the slides, they're saved on the slides. So I would go up to file and export as a movie. And essentially what I made right now was a QuickTime screen recording where the picture in the video is all my slides and the audio is everything that I said as I was teaching. So it's just like teaching from a slideshow on a smart board. I would hit next, I would name it, and I would save it somewhere on my machine so that I could then share it in whatever way um, was appropriate. So if you wanna know how to open up a PowerPoint in Keynote, it's pretty simple. 
just go to where that PowerPoint file is on your computer. Whoops, PPT. Uh, I got some random PowerPoints here. And instead of double clicking on it to open it up in PowerPoint, do a control click and open with Keynote. Okay, and that's how you get it so that you can add that recording really quick and easy. If you don't already have PowerPoint slides, just open up Keynote and do a new blank presentation and put some text on your slides or some images and you can still record it. It doesn't have to be um, already made slides to use that. All right, so we've got um, Keynote and we have QuickTime. Um, the other day when we talked as a group, somebody right away asked, can I show my face like picture in picture while I'm teaching my content? Um, and with Keynote and QuickTime, you can't just built in. Um, you could do a workaround where maybe you open up Photo Booth like on one half of your screen or you have two windows showing. One is your, key, one is your uh, QuickTime recording and your content and you also are recording your Photo Booth so you could, they see your face at the same time. But honestly, what I would recommend if you really want to do a picture in picture so people see your face as well as um, your content is just to use Zoom. And we, we kind of showed you around the controls and I know a lot of you are learning a lot about Zoom here from your own staff meetings and um, your own kinds of communication at home. But you all, even with a free account, have the ability to start a new Zoom meeting and just start your video like, like I did here. And now my video is showing again. And then hit that record button. And when you get done with your meeting, it's just you and nobody else in your meeting. But when you hit stop, it'll save a recording of you teaching and it'll have your face as that inset video along with whatever's on your screen. And that movie file will go in your documents folder. This is just the default part. Go to documents and Zoom makes this folder called Zoom. And you can see all of the different Zoom meetings that I've recorded over the last couple of days. And you just expand one of those folders and there'll be a little video file inside of it. Now, it, it might need to process for a minute or two and you might have to double click on it to convert it, but it works. If you just double click it, it converts it. When it's ready, it'll tell you. And you can see here that I have this video recording that if I just you know preview it for you, this was whatever we recorded that day. So it's a video file that I can take and share and distribute to people um, in whatever format we're already used to. I'm gonna show you one other trick here. I could take that Zoom recording and open it with QuickTime. And I could take an extra step or two to go file, export as, and compress it down to a smaller file size so I have something that's easier to share with my students. So again, if you are comfortable in Zoom or you wanna get that picture in picture effect, don't be afraid to just start your own Zoom meeting with nobody in it and just record right to your computer. And then um, you can also use Zoom. So maybe if you don't want, you know, you can just record your, your face, but you can also share your screen like I'm doing here. And so I want to get out of my, my, my screen content here. Um, and now I'm just showing my face. But down across the bottom, you'll see this. There's a share button with an, an arrow pointing upward. And when you're the host, or even when you're not the host, you can click on that. And you can see that there's options for sharing. And I, I, I know you can't see this right now. But um, again, you could watch this back later and try it in your own Zoom room. That'd be totally appropriate. But the first choice is to um, share your whole entire computer desktop, which is what I've been doing, so that you guys can see my computer. But there's a second choice called a whiteboard. And I'll show you that now. If you choose that, then you could just work out your problems. It's a little bit tricky with a mouse, obviously. You can also type text. And you can have participants actually um, annotate and write on that as well. Um, but, but basically, this is just a whiteboard, a space to show when you're recording that Zoom meeting that people can see. And the third option, when you go to that share button, 
is to be able to connect your phone or your iPad via AirPlay. Don't feel like you have to do this. All of these are just options, and I, I really recommend you, you know, listen to all of them and think what you would be most comfortable with. But for some advanced users, they might want to connect to an iPad via AirPlay and um, then do whatever teaching there is on the actual iPad or iPhone. So I'll probably do that here in a second. Um, but first, I'm going to go back to more simple, OK? So we've talked about um, sharing our uh, or creating recording content on QuickTime and on Keynote and on Zoom. But now I'm going to go even more simple. Just pull up your phone. And um, I'm using this little um, handy clamp here that Molly actually found at Menards for a couple bucks. And it just holds my phone up so that I can just open up my, my camera and switch to a front facing camera, switch to video mode. And I can do a pretty simple video recording here, just sitting in my chair and talking to my students. Just hit record and don't be um, worried about, you know, having to use any of these fancy, fancy tools. Just record yourself on your phone. Or um, like some, one teacher was telling me the other day, you know, on a, a whiteboard attached to an easel. Just prop your phone up and record yourself teaching from your, your living room or whatever it might be. Um, that's great too. And then another thing to do is use your camp, your phone as a, like a do-it-yourself document camera. I'm gonna switch this over again here. I was playing around with one with an ice cream bucket here and a wood plank. Um, you just need something that kind of hangs out over the edge. There we go. And so then I'm going to prop it up so that it doesn't fall over, right? But if you can get it to hang off there, then you can just teach. I don't know how well you guys can see this. Just get out your workbook and your pen and just, you know, you're videoing yourself, your hand. You're videoing what's going underneath of the camera here. And it's like a little document camera, really low tech and really easy. <laughs> All right, so um, this is a really cool, um, another kind of a hack. If you happen to have one of these Osmos, this, this Osmo, if you have one in your classroom, it comes with this base that holds an iPad and then this little mirror that goes on the top of the camera. Over the weekend, last weekend, or I think it was about a week ago, Osmo, the maker of this little app um, and system, came out with an a free app called Osmo Projector. I don't know if you can see it there on my iPad screen or not. Um, but this is a really great way to turn your Osmo into a document camera. So I could just record um, with my phone as the recording device, but use my, my iPad and my Osmo as a projector. I'll just hit start and show you how, um, with a low quality camera here, it's pretty simple. It just takes and mirrors whatever's on the paper down here. So I can teach my lesson and everything that I write um, is just instantly in my iPad screen. Um, lots of ways you could record that. Again, you could record it with your phone over here as the external um, filming device, or you could just record your screen on your iPad too. So really all that the people would see in the video would be what you see on the iPad screen right now. To show you how to do that, I'm gonna switch from my camera here. I'll just stop my video for a second. Share my iPad and my iPhone or iPhone with AirPlay. And I know you're not seeing my screen right now, but I mentioned this earlier, that if you're on the same network and you click that option in Zoom, then you can go to your AirPlay settings, your screen mirroring, and it makes a little network called Zoom Katie Mara, whatever the name of your Zoom account is. And now you can see my phone instead of um, my, my computer screen. You're looking at my phone, obviously, okay? So um, to record your phone screen, I'm just gonna make sure here we've got, uh, yes, 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 yes. All right, to record your phone screen, Oops, can you guys still see my phone? Yes. Okay, good, because I can't, so I gotta find it again here. 
well, I'll just hope, I'll just trust you see my phone screen. Um, to record your phone screen, you're gonna do, you're gonna set up screen recording in your settings first. You gotta do this one time. So you go to settings and you go to, to the control center, which is right underneath general here. And then you go to customize controls. Now I already have the screen recording feature in my um, setting. I'm gonna remove it for a second. The default is it's probably down here under more controls. You can see it down at the bottom here. I'm just gonna click that green plus. It sends it up to the top. And now I only have to do that once because anytime I pull down on my control center by swiping down from the, the top right-hand corner of my phone, I get this, this record button um, down here in the bottom corner here. And again, it's kind of like QuickTime. The very first time you'll wanna do a, um, a long press, a press and hold, and make sure that the audio, the microphone's on, so it gets your sound too. Um, but you can do this on an iPad or an iPhone. And then you just tap the record button and you record away. And everything that's on your screen will be captured and saved into your Photos app when you're done. I'm gonna get out of that. But just um, remember, you can rewind this recording and watch that again, or you can always reach out to Molly or I, and we can walk you through that if that's the, the option you choose for recording content. Let's say you just have a phone and you just wanna record the, the information from your screen to share with kids, I would highly recommend just going into settings and getting that screen recorder turned on in the control center so that you can access it with that record button and um, use it to record content, okay? I'm gonna show you a couple other things while I have the phone connected here. And one of them is to be able to digitize documents. So let's take our physical, I'm just gonna show you here, our physical workbook, right? Like this is a, a math workbook here. And we wanna send these pages home to students to work on without having to photocopy them and hand them out physically. So we know that we can take pictures of documents and that'll be okay. But if your phone is updated and to the latest iOS or your iPad, there's a really great way to scan them and make them more clean and automatically put it into a PDF to share with students. And that's by using the Notes app. So um, you can see on my iPad screen here, stop me if you can't, that there's a notes app. And if I just do a long press on that, whoops, my bad there. A long press again, just press and hold a little bit. One of the options comes up to scan a document. So I'll just tap that. And now it comes up like a camera, but I'm just gonna get that whole page in view and tap it like I'm taking a picture. And you'll notice it saves the, the page in the lower left corner and it says it's ready for the next scan. So I can turn the page, I can take the picture. If it doesn't get it perfectly, I can adjust the edges, but a lot of times it'll just grab the whole page and um, keep the perspective and make it bright and kind of eliminate the borders. And I can take the next page and decide if I need to adjust and keep the scan. And you kind of get the idea there. Now I've done three pages. So you'll see in the bottom right-hand corner, it says save three. And if I tap that, look at, I now have a three page PDF that's ready for me to share out. In the top right-hand corner is the share arrow. And I can now airdrop, I can message it, I can email it, I can save it to a Dropbox, save it to files, um, whatever I want to do, it's just ready for me to um, send to my students. I can put it on Google Classroom. It's even smart enough, and I thought this was crazy when I saw this the other day. It knew what text was on those workbook pages that I scanned, and it named the file Volumes of Rectangular Prisms. That's pretty cool. So if you do have access to the latest iOS on your phone or iPad, and you want to send home digital copies of documents, don't hesitate to go to that notes app, tap and hold, scan a document and do it in that manner um, to get you a little bit more flexibility and ease of your scanning. And then also if you were on Safari and I think I'm gonna, well, no, I'll show you this on my phone here quick first. We'll pull up a web page in Safari. Maybe I'll just go to 
time.com here. And we'll pull up an article here that is about COVID-19. That's appropriate. Okay, a couple of things. Let's say I wanted to take this web page and send it to my students as a PDF, not as a link, but as an actual document, an offline document. Maybe I want to mark it up or something like that. So in the top left-hand corner, there's these two A's. And that can put my document into reader view, um, which cleans up any ads and any junk on the side um, and just gives you the text in the video. So you can see this one's pretty clean already. But if for some reason, especially on an iPad, you're getting too much junk, then turn it into reader view. Then, and that's just, you don't have to do that, but that's just nice to do. Then down at the bottom middle is my share arrow. And here I can switch and find um, the way to save it as a PDF. Um, I can print it as a PDF. There's actually, I did this on my iPad last time. Yeah, I think there's a simple, no, there's not there. Uh, mark up and print to save to Dropbox, open in GoodNotes. So on my iPad, one of the options is save as PDF. But okay, so let me show you one other way to get it as a PDF. You're on whatever it might be. Here it is an article. I'm gonna take a screenshot, like you probably know how to do with the two buttons on your phone. There, I've captured a screenshot, and I'm gonna tap on that thumbnail down in the bottom left-hand corner. Again, if your operating system is updated enough, they have this new feature on the screenshots where instead of doing the whole screen, uh, or just the one screen that you see, that was the traditional way of doing a screenshot. You can switch over at the top here to full page, and you'll see now that the entire document is all scrollable as one PDF. Must be a long article, it's taking a little bit here. And then I can, um, actually it brings up my annotation tools automatically so I could highlight and mark on top of this document and then use my share arrow in the, in the top right-hand corner. It's already ready as a PDF document with the title and with any markings I did on it to share out. You gotta trust me on that one because that screenshot feature is really wonderful on, um, on iOS devices that are updated, the ability to do a full page. All right, so we have um, some options for our phones, for digitizing content, for exporting Safari web pages. Um, and we can do similar things on our Mac with Safari as well, as far as the reader view and exporting as a PDF, or even doing file print and saving as a PDF. But let's transition here into number nine on the agenda, which is sharing recommendations. And so far, I've been telling you all about how to capture or create content but we have to remember that sharing is a two-step process on the left of um, here i'll share my screen again on the left are ways that you can upload that file you got to take that document and you definitely want to um, put that video file somewhere so you can send it to youtube you can put it on google drive you can put it on canvas or schoology or Google Classroom, or you could put it into Dropbox, but you're not done even then because the video lives online, but you gotta point people to it. So give them the link and you could put the link on Seesaw. You could put the link on Google Classroom. You could put the link on Canvas. You could send the link in an email or in a text message or through Remind, but just have a plan. So I'm gonna capture my content with X, I'm going to upload it to Y, and then I'm going to share where that location is with Z. And, and again, keep it simple, but don't think just because I record it on my phone that I shouldn't have a, a way to um, do the other parts of the process because that's where you're going to run into problems. Again, Molly and I are willing to help with any of those and, and look at your options and what works best in your um, home teaching environment. Um, just to recommend a couple, if you already have a Google email through your school, you already have a YouTube channel, and all you need to do is go to youtube.com, sign in with your school Google account, and upload your videos, whatever, however you created them, upload them there. When it's done processing, you will choose if it is a, a public video 
an unlisted video or a private video? And I've answered this question for teachers a lot the last few days. You might think that private is best, but private means it's private. Nobody sees it but you. So a better option might be unlisted. And unlisted means that the average person who comes to YouTube isn't going to be able to search for it and find it. But um, anybody who has the link will be able to view it. Or if you're comfortable with public, public is fine too. But private is too private to use for teachers. Um, Google Drive, what you need to remember there is if you upload to Google Drive, it's on your drive. You also have to share that file so that other people with the link can actually see it because the default is private. Um, Canvas, you can record right into. Some of us in ESU8 have Canvas accounts and you could actually hit the record. Just be very, very um, patient if you record straight into Canvas with your webcam because it doesn't tell you that it's processing and uploading and it does take a while at home. Um, but when it's done, then that video file would be right on your Canvas post. Again, we can show you that in more detail later on, but know that's an option. Or you could record somewhere else and then just attach that file to Canvas, and that's fine too. As far as recording um, straight into Seesaw, you can with a five-minute limit. Um, I know that a lot of elementary teachers are utilizing Seesaw very well, both for sharing content with their students and for students sharing back with them. Um, and you could just open up Seesaw and attach a video of yourself, and that would work. Just know you can only go to five minutes in order to do it natively in Seesaw. Um, but you could share a link to your YouTube video that was longer, for example, or Google Drive. Um, Google Classroom and Canvas, and we kind of covered all that. But it really all um, leads into these best practices, which I saved the best for last because no matter what you do or don't do above here, it is so important that if you're trying to record lessons from home, that you try to take whatever you would teach in the classroom and cut it down by maybe a third even. Keep it short, keep it simple. Um, we know that our students don't necessarily want to watch a 45 minute lecture. They don't want to watch it in the classroom. They especially don't want to watch it at home. Um, focus on that key information, really, pare down what's most important for them to hear from you. Uh, maybe it's even just a quick demonstration of a concept on your document camera, whatever it might be, and then the rest is not included in the video. It's typed out in the, the body of the message that you send home. Do make it personal. Um, there's all kinds of educational content available online these days from Khan Academy and all kinds of sources, but what our students need is you, they need you. And so even if it's not perfect and it's not pretty, um, just just really you put yourself into it and you gotta let go of those fears of, we all worry about seeing ourselves on camera. Um, that's not, a, not applicable right now. Just make it personal and don't worry about those imperfections. I did skip one topic up here before we go to questions from you guys. Um, and that was about using iOS apps to um, to um, actually just record all of your content. So this isn't necessarily to use a video, but maybe to do a, a demonstration or teach a lesson. I just linked these up here under number seven, iOS apps, explain everything, educations, or Seesaw obviously has that um, kind of whiteboard feature and you can record right into it too. But um, these are wonderful because they're free right now, the pro versions, and you can do everything and more, but you do have to learn a new app if you're not already comfortable to them. They're linked to how to get started here in resources and how to get the free um, pro accounts on these, or these two for sure. Um, so if you're already a user of one of those apps on an iPad, then by all means, look into going further with recording content in those. But if you're just starting, I, I don't recommend starting there because you can get by with some of these other tools and techniques. So the last thing is this last page on my handout. It's information specific from Apple Education because we're talking about Apple devices in this Zoominar. So um, this first link is a great little, um, they only have a couple videos right now, 
but they're they're better instructionally than what I've given you on how to use the iPad to, for example, record your screen or how to um, prepare your voices for remote learning. Here's one on create and share presentations and demos. And they've got more coming soon, like using the Clips app to create videos that are really engaging for our families. Um, again, if you're already comfortable with Clips, this is a, a great app to use to record yourselves too. So specific to Apple and from Apple Education, um, definitely worth a shot looking at there. And also on this page is some information that has been shared from Apple Education. Sorry, there we go. For, uh, uh, for schools. So there's a set of apps that they recommend um, in a collection in the App Store for learning and studying from home. IT people, how to prepare iPads to send home, which may have already happened, or maybe you're planning to do more of that in your district, and um, cleaning them and keeping them germ-free and virus-free. There's also ways to stay connected with the education community. And the very bottom, not from Apple Education, but a blog post that I liked specifically for elementary teachers on different types of videos teachers can make for elementary student, students. Some of it we already talked about, but maybe it's a good resource to look at later on. So with that, I'm gonna get out of my screen share. I'm gonna to go to the chat. I can let Molly jump in too. And yeah. let's take you to your questions. Um, last time you showed how you used your phone as a document camera. Did you show that this time? Yeah, with my um, do-it-yourself document camera stand over here. Did you already show that? As long as it came through. I, I mean, I know I did it. I don't know if everybody. Okay, I might have been answering a. a okay, sure. Idea. Yeah. And yeah, it doesn't have to be an ice cream bucket. It could be. <laughs> I, I've got a cardboard box over here too that I use as you know a makeshift whatever. You just got to be able to hang your phone off the edge and not have it topple off, and then put your 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 document underneath and yeah it just works using the video camera so perfect i must have just been nope that's good something. other things other than that Maybe. questions um there hasn't been um very many i'm sure that's because i'm more confusing this time than i was last time and you don't even know what to ask but please jump in and unmute and um, I can repeat something or talk about some experience that you've had that's beneficial for others. Oh, I'm getting the unstable internet message again. Yeah, we had some marbled language from you. Yeah, it gave me that message that it was unstable internet again. I noticed that it gets worse as the day goes on. I don't know if that's the same for you guys in your homes too, but in the morning, it's better. So maybe we better schedule these Zooms in the morning. Okay, Dawn has a okay. question here about taking home a document camera reader. How do you connect? Yeah, we the have. Okay, good. Did you deal do that? Have, we Did have you? been allowed. Oh. Yep, we've been told from Essen that we're allowed to take home any technology good. that we need to. Good. So I'm planning on taking home the document camera. Good. How do you connect that so Does, you can use that with Zoom? When you use your document camera, does it show on your computer screen? Do you know? Do you remember? I, I, Sorry, usually I hook it up to my LCD projector at school. Okay. Is it a USB? Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not a USB. It's um, BGA. It's the cord. Yeah, it's, it's the cord with the two blue ends. And okay. I think when you bring that into your computer, it allows you to see it on your computer screen when you hook it to your computer and then just share your screen and make sure that you share that what you're showing it should okay. work that way okay thank you katie agree i agree yep as long as you can get it on your computer screen which that would be your goal anyway otherwise because you don't have a projector at home then you would um just share your computer screen and whatever you see on the document camera you'll be recording in zoom Bet Betty uh, has a good point okay, there. That thank I'm gonna you. Just, you bet. Thanks, Don. Um, Betty said taking a scan on your phone. I don't know if you're asking Betty or telling us, but yes, that's true. It's a better quality to scan documents like I showed you on the phone than using a document camera, um, just because the quality of the camera in our phones is so much higher these days, and it does definitely cleans it up better. So. 
And then you don't have to turn it into a PDF if you use the way that I showed you using the notes app and scanning a document because it automatically is and it's ready for multiple pages. Whereas if you just took pictures on a document camera or pictures on your phone, you would have to take all those pictures and put them into a document, one document, and then save as a PDF. So it's a lot more steps. Katie, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, this is Patrick. Um, I've missed option two. I got the one where you can record lessons. I got the one where you can scan and photograph lessons, but that second one, I don't know how you write on your screen to illustrate and type those things. Um, I think that was in a Zoom. In a Zoom. How do you share content on your screen? Yeah, that okay. was during your Zoom part. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so Patrick, I sent Zoom licenses to all of the Stanton teachers. So if you need me to resend that invite, um, just send me an email afterwards. This is Molly. And then we'll get you into Zoom. And when you share content in Zoom, one of them is a whiteboard. Okay. Well, I think I'm to that point. We've we've been having meetings all week, and this is the Great. second one I've watched here. So would that be available then? Right. You would share your screen. There's a little share button on the bottom of your Zoom. Yes. And when uh -huh. you share that, there should be a whiteboard. If not, we just need to turn it on in your settings. Okay. Can I press that green share button right now? Yes. Yep. Just don't go all the way. But yep, you can press it. And then do you see the, the, oh, the options oh, yeah. across the top say desktop, whiteboard, yep. or iPhone, iPad via AirPlay? Right. So that's what you'll yep, do. Don't click share those. now. Yep, you so can actually share you... your screen to our Zoom meeting here. So your students could share their screens to your Zoom meetings too. If you're talking about just recording a lesson, okay. you share your screen and you record it as you do it. Um, but it works both ways. And this is a great opportunity for Molly to plug her Zoom 101. So another one of these, just like we're doing now, but specific on Zoom, just all about Zoom. Is happening when, Molly? Tomorrow. April 1st, right? wasn't it? Tomorrow at 10. Tomorrow at 10 for the Zoom one. April 1st, right. next well, Wednesday at 11 for a Google one. So Google Classroom, uh, screencasting on a Chromebook, and um, Google Meet. That's a good reminder, okay. too. And if you're not getting those emails from us at ESU8 through MailChimp, you can email Molly um, or I, katie at esu8.org, and we can send those meeting um, invitations and the times and stuff um, and the links just straight to your email. Or you can also send us a message and say, hey, I'm not getting the ESU8 MailChimp emails about these opportunities. And we'll get you added into MailChimp so you get those emails at home too. We're also so happy far, to you, just do one-on-one -on -one sessions too. So. Sorry, sorry, Patrick, go ahead. Well, I was just saying I've received everything so far. So Okay, good, good. Thank you. Great. <laughs> We're here to help, honestly. We know that you Can guys you have the hard work. Question? What'd you say, Molly? Well, Oh, I was just going to say, did you see Betty's question in the in I the do chat? now. So Betty um, okay. is asking about using Cami, which is a plugin in Chrome, and turning a PDF into a writable document. Well, I mean, you can use it not on a, a Chrome either. But um, I think Betty will save that for next week on that next Wednesday when we talk about Google tools and teaching from home with that. Um, yes, because Betty, you're absolutely right. And everybody should know that just because I scanned my math workbook and saved it as a PDF, it doesn't mean that students can click on it and type on it without a tool to do so. It's not an editable PDF. So if you wanted to use that on Google Classroom so students could all um, type in their answers and then send it back to you, it requires an additional step. And let's save that for next week if that's okay. 
good. She says, that's okay. Thanks. <laughs> It's good to know it's an option, but start simple. I'm really, really serious about this. Start with a um, how's everybody doing video that you record on your phone and put it on wherever you decide is your storage space, your upload place, and then send out the message however you think it, and see how that works first. Don't start with teaching the most important lesson you've ever tried to teach from home. Um, just start with something simple and easy and fun. And, and we'll all support each other and grow in the process.